All right, so another week, another episode. Uh, Jermaine, doing good. Last week we had quite a quite a robust discussion about business. You know, I think um, you weren't feeling well, uh, not COVID positive, uh, just not feeling well. Yeah. Uh, and um, and yeah, and we had a we had a nice intense discussion about business. Uh, our off off air discussion was was even more intense. So that was that was more good. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should yeah. do like the yeah. You know the show prep note uh, video mm. sharing also. Um, mm. Cool. Like I completely forgot what the topic is for today. What's the topic for today? The the tools that entrepreneurs uh, might need in their startup phase. Uh, tools like software, um, you know, HR, IT, all that, all those bouquets that. Uh, small business uh, normally gets like faced with um, so yeah that's the that's in general what the what the conversation uh, that we're going to delve into uh, today hopefully so yeah. yeah all right cool so I mean you know with every small business you see it uh, um, all over is well I mean you and I see it because we deal with a lot of businesses um, yeah. But you see, there's common things that that uh, businesses need, um, you know, to to run their business. Um, I think the number one tool that everyone has is Excel. Like, if you're not using Excel or some sort of spreadsheet, whether it's Google Sheets or whether it's, you know, uh, whatever spreadsheet app there's out there, um, you mm -hmm. know, the, a spreadsheet app is is an essential tool for for any business. Um, Jeeves, what happened to you with like your, this graphic on your face? Uh, yeah. like it's, no, it's not that. It's, uh, it's like the signal is so, so bad. It's 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 looking very very weird. <laughs> cool. I was like, no. It's not it's great. My you, 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 you it, yeah. Cool. So I mean. Um, oh, mm -hmm. So yeah, so so besides Excel, because Excel is a great tool and you can do a lot with Excel, but it can also be overwhelming for a lot of people in terms of, of you know people. learning Excel, how to work with Excel, different stuff that they need to figure out, um, you know. And if anybody wants to reach out to me to learn more about how to use Excel, you're welcome to do that through the comments. Um, and uh, I think I'll put a link where you can actually schedule a session with me. Uh, and I'll take you through some of the some of the basics that you need as a as a business owner to be more effective in Excel. If you're interested in training, I'll be launching a training course soon. Uh, but for now, we're talking about the tools every business needs uh, to operate in. And while I deal with a lot of lot of businesses, I think the best person to talk about this in more detail is Jermaine. Most uh, common question that we normally get get asked, especially in the in that startup phase, is um, you know, what software do I need? What software do I need? And, uh, you know, the market is so flooded at the moment with uh, all these uh, different software, especially the your online uh, software, mm. uh, that, you know, it just confuses the clients. It confuses because uh, they, they hear Zero, they hear Sage, they hear QuickBooks. It's everywhere on TV. Um, uh, normally, normally, um, especially the client, the client base that we deal with, we um, because we are a, uh, a partner with, with with one or two of the, the uh, these companies. Um, we normally just tell our clients, don't worry about, don't worry about, uh, you know, what software to buy, etc. You know, and we literally send them out there for for a couple of months. Go do your thing. Focus on what you're good at. Um, you know, to, to do a, a quick catch up and to get the numbers in the, in an acceptable state, that's the easy bit. You know, once you once once there's traction and once there's meat uh, to your numbers, then um, at that point, um, you know, can do we look at you know is software is acquiring your own software as, a, as an entrepreneur the way to go? And uh, uh, just to add to what you said earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what you said earlier is, um, you know, having a having a basic knowledge of, of Excel because if you can keep if you can keep your records initially on 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 on, on that Excel platform, then uh, you know this makes our jobs as a, as a, an accounting uh, advisor that more but easier. 
than the conventional yeah. 30 years ago when people used to dump all their stuff in the shoebox. Yeah. Uh, so, you know? so, so when we, we look at, I mean, every, every kind of business is going to be different. They're going to have different needs, but there's mm. some commonalities across a business. And I, I'm sure your point of view and my point of view is going to be biased towards the things that we mm. interact with um, mm. on a daily, weekly basis. Uh, so mm. Excel, I think, is a, is, a, is a great tool because it's going to give you universal usage. You know, if you mm. need to track sales, you're going to probably use Excel. You can even use Excel to start generating your first few invoices. You don't need 100%. an online system. Mm. It's advisable to maybe look at some of the free versions like FreshBooks uh, that have free version. Uh, and, um, you know, some of the bank, banking apps has just got the free, uh, you know. Some free accounting. Apps, yeah so you just want yeah. to be able to track your invoices if you're sending out you know it depends on on the, also the volume of invoices that you send out if you're sending out like thousand invoices a month then that's great but you want to use an uh, uh, an app, online application or some sort of application to issue those invoices you don't necessarily need an accounting system you just need to be able to track what invoices were issued right so that's the that's the one thing and um, from a finance perspective, again, is tracking expenses isn't general. You don't need a system for that. You just if you if you're using a business bank account. I mean, if you got two, if you, you have a personal bank account, let's say you're a solopreneur, like and you have your personal bank account, you're gonna have to just sit through that bank account at the at some point in Excel and mark the transactions of your that is related to your business. I mean, I'm sure Jermaine, you've got something else to add on to when you have a, a personal. Uh, uh, account and you're running your business there what's your advice for someone doing that as a, as a sole proprietor are you, are you referring yeah. to so if, if someone has if someone is, is uh, running a sole proprietor then obviously is uh, business um, income and expenditure sort of intertwined with these uh, personal expenses it's like it's like you said now. It's uh, and, and it's relatively easy. I mean, you 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 online in, on your banking pro, uh, pro, uh, app or internet banking, and it's literally just downloading it into 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 uh, into Excel and just separating you know what's business related and uh, and what's um, you know personal. Um, the obviously source documents in that in today's world, you know, that can all be scanned um, just to have that uh, uh, support behind the, behind the numbers. Um, so don't throw your, your source documentation away, um, especially especially if you're sole proprietor, uh, because you know the, um, that uh, separation or segregation of, uh, of uh, business and personal expenses do become a bit uh, muddy uh, if you're running at, uh, as, a, as a sole proprietor. So um, definitely keep your. Do you, your do you still documents. advise people to run as sole proprietorships? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking no. of it, and I just can't see any reason why someone would still do that. I no. mean, I get it if you <laughs> no. maybe sort of at a start up and it's idea phase, and you, you know, you're tinkering mm. around. But once you've got mm. some traction, you know, mm. with you may, even if you're making a thousand bucks a month, mm. the way I see yeah. it is that that then is text at your personal income level, whereas if you run it through a business, you know, mm. that tax, More tax break you can claim yeah. expenses yeah. as a sole proprietor. You can't actually claim expenses. Am I, or do I misunderstand that? No, 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 you, 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 you're on the right track there. I, 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 I also think the, 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 the danger or the risk uh, attached to, you know, running as a, as a sole proprietor, if you engaging with, uh, with third parties, etc. And uh, the the business goes uh, pear shaped. Then you know they, they come after you in your personal capacity. So um, I mean we can probably at some point uh, in the next couple of episodes we can probably talk about those various uh, vehicles that's available uh, to you uh, once you mature into okay you start up as a as, as a sole prop and then you know you kind of your next step up would be obviously. Um, Partnerships is, is neither here nor there, but you know, forming a company because a lot more. If you want to interact with government, for example, you know, it's it's it's, it's very difficult for you to get any sort of contract. You know, if uh, uh, you're not formalized, if I can put it that way. So I, yeah, I haven't seen cool. to answer your question. I haven't seen a lot of uh, sole props uh, out there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, 
Yeah, it's also, uh, I feel that it talks about the mindset of where you are and, and, and your business journey, man. If you, if you don't take it serious enough to register an entity, you know, then it's, yeah. you're always going to play small. Um, I don't know. Yeah, know, I mean, uh, large companies yeah, I understand. That, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's also the perception, Richard, like you said, now, it's also the perception, you know, people say, oh, you know, you're, you're so uh, proprietary. I mean, even the, the basic stuff, like an like a email address, for example, you know, and uh, I'm not, I'm not slating, uh, you know, when people, <laughs> the uh, their business address is Gmail or Yahoo, um, you know, people look at, look at that and they're like, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how people perceive uh, a business. I mean, that could be a fantastic business, but they look at the email account and they go, oh, okay, it's a, it's a Gmail account. Um, and I, I know a lot of company, uh, successful guys that, uh, that still got Gmail accounts. So I'm not slating them. Yeah. I'm just saying it's, it's perception. That's it what, is. what it people is. on the outside uh, is, is looking at. So. Yeah, yeah, and and I don't think people actually understand how cheap and how easy it is to set these things up. I mean, you you don't have to be a technical person to set up your own domain name. Like you can go through like a company called Zanilo, uh, they used to be called Hetzner, and you can order mm. a domain. Like and it will set your email up, and they'll send you all the how far to how to get started. Or you can, I mean, I don't know who out there doesn't have an IT friend that can help them. I mean, if you mm. if you are out there and you're running as a sole proprietor or you're running as a business but you don't have a proper like email address like comment i'd love to know uh if you've got a proper email address your business address or you're still using a gmail and oh for the love please tell me not using yahoo uh, i think all oh, yahoo addresses oh, hotmail. get banned or hotmail. 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 Oh, hotmail oh goodness hotmail <laughs> yeah so oh, I mean, Richard, this, this, this is another tool like this right um you um uh normally even with the startup so even before a lot of the guys when they come to us are like Jermaine, I want to start the business, um, and that old adage of, uh, okay, so I ask them, what are you going to call this business? Normally what I tell them is, fine, you want to call the business X, Y, and Z. First check for me, what that, if there's a domain available for X, Y, and Z. Um, because normally we have to re reserve a name, but uh, you know, that's a bit tricky because there's a million names out there on the, on the C CIPC uh, database. So if, if, you, if, if you want a very specific name, I always tell the client to go back, check if the domain's available, um, so that if you do get that name, then you've locked the domain in as well. You know, so it just all adds to that whole professionalism once a company is registered. So, um, so uh, you know, it's, 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 I guess email email uh, branding it's all it's all part of that initial even though you might think branding comes towards the end of of, of uh you know of a couple of months into your trade you want to start looking at branding etc it mm -hmm. actually starts at the beginning because like you say now with these uh, gmail hotmail yahoo um, have those have a domain locked in with that's linked to your name um, and you know, with that comes the, the email accounts because I'm sitting here on the other side and you try to tender for a piece of work that's out there. And I see a Jermaine at Yahoo, yeah. Yeah. immediately I, I go under the defense of it's probably unfair towards the, the, the entrepreneur, but it just is it just is that way, you know. Um, uh, it's, it's people have perceptions and uh, uh, so they're not gonna, you're not. You, mm, if you ever wanted to know sort of where to go, and I've got the website open now, uh, it's http uh, uh, za So that, I'll put it in the description. So you can go there, and if you scroll down here, you'll see the who is uh, registration details. So you can click on that, and mm. if you type in e-magination, which is our website, mm. you know, it'll tell you sort of the registration of that so a lot of information is redacted but that's fine uh, but it'll tell you if a domain is available or not so if you want to my awesome business that's probably not awesome yeah it's available so there you go <laughs> that's you go. that's how you can do it so it's coza so it's coza.net.za and the who is description and that will get you what it is that you that you're looking for yeah that easy because you, you know how many how many times a, a a client would if i tell them okay you need to reserve three names think of three names 
that I can apply a, a navel. It stumps them, eh? <laughs> Like, I mean, I'm not the most creative when it comes to uh, <laughs> selecting a name, uh, but sure, it's, it's a tough one. So you got to think carefully about, you know, uh, the direction you want to you want to go in in terms of, a, of 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 your startup. So um, yeah, very important. Yeah, and I mean, uh, look, uh, the name isn't important in the end. The mm. name actually isn't mm. important. There's companies mm. like that's registered as ABC Trading, you know. Mm. So and like they do good business, man. Like. You've got a product that someone loves and likes and whatever it is like your your, mm. your domain your internet domain doesn't have to be the same as your business name so there's a lot of stuff that you can do like don't get locked into that only that stop you from from taking the journey of starting a business mm. like make mm. sure that you've got the right head on for why you want to start this business and the value you feel you can bring to a market mm. that has an appetite for what it is excuse mm. me that has an appetite for what it is that you that you uniquely bring uh, uh to the world and, and to the market so I mean, so the only those things stop you. They they aren't that expensive. I think registering a domain is seventy nine rand a year. Um, you know, if you go to Zanilo's website, you can check all of that details. But I think it's like seventy nine rand a year, and that's where you get your own email address. And that's just sort of you know you getting your emails to your email account if you, and you can use some web interface. And I think it's also possible to connect your Gmail. To use that that email address like so you it can still come from you so you can create aliases and all this stuff from gmail so I mean, as those options are there to you so great so we've got two business tools there right there so we've got excel as a as a tool you need some sort of invoicing uh software depending on your volume if you are low volume you can just use excel to start uh, but there's a lot of free options available in terms of invoicing. You don't need a full on accounting system, not yet, not in the beginning <laughs> at, at, at least, uh, and your bank account. So, so there we got three. Your bank account is a system that you're Ooh. using uh, to be able to track your expenses, uh, an invoicing system to be able to, to track the invoices that you've issued because you're going to need to calculate your profitability and potentially your cash flow. Those two things will help mm. you get to, get to that understanding. Uh, and using a tool like Excel will be able to produce a cash flow report for you. If you don't have a cash flow report in your business, you need to be looking at cash flow. It is super important. It is, it is probably the most important tool in business because in the end, it's about liquidity and cash flow is your liquidity. It is, is how much money you have available in the future, you know, for mm. the expenses that you, that you're going to incur and run to run your business and then an email. So that's for communication, right? Besides a computer, you probably need a computer, but we're talking about software. Yeah. What are the common, uh, the things that you see people using? So what are the